Edward Terry Sanford July 23, 1865, to March 8, 1930, was an American jurist who served as an associate justice on the United States Supreme Court from 1923 until his death in 1930. Prior to his nomination to the High Court, Sanford served as an assistant attorney general under President Theodore Roosevelt from 1905 to 1907, and as a federal district court judge from 1908 to 1923. Sanford is typically viewed as a conservative justice, favoring strict adherence to antitrust laws, and often voted with his mentor, Chief Justice William Howard Taft, a graduate of Harvard Law School. Sanford practiced law in his hometown of Knoxville, Tennessee, during the 1890s and early 1900s decade. As Assistant Attorney General, he rose to national prominence as lead prosecutor during the high-profile trial of Joseph Shipp in 1907, which to date is the only criminal trial conducted by the Supreme Court. Sanford's most lasting impact on American law is arguably his majority opinion in the landmark case, Gitlow v. New York 1925. This case, which introduced the incorporation doctrine, helped pave the way for many of the Warren Court's decisions expanding civil rights and civil liberties in the 1950s and 1960s. <laughs> Early life and legal career Sanford was born in Knoxville in 1865, the eldest son of prominent Knoxville businessman Edward J. Sanford (1831–1902) and Swiss immigrant Emma Chavon. Sanford's father, as president or vice president of nearly a dozen banks and corporations, was one of the primary driving forces behind Knoxville's late 19th-century industrial boom. His maternal grandfather, Adrian Chavon, was the leader of a group of Swiss colonists who arrived in Tennessee in the late 1840s and his uncle, Albert Chavon, was a noted author and sociologist. In 1891, Sanford married Ludie Mallory Woodruff, the daughter of Knoxville hardware magnate W. W. Woodruff. Sanford received a B.A. and a Ph.B. from the University of Tennessee in 1883, a B.A. from Harvard University in 1885, an M.A. from Harvard in 1889, and an L.L.B. from Harvard Law School in 1889. He was in private practice in Knoxville from 1890 to 1907, and was a lecturer at the University of Tennessee School of Law from 1898 to 1907. One of Sanford's earliest appearances before the Supreme Court came as an attorney representing the appellant, Knoxville Iron Company, in Knoxville Iron Company v. Harbison 1901. The court ruled in favor of Harbison and upheld states' right to ban companies from paying employees in scrip rather than cash. Assistant Attorney General Sanford first served in the government as a special assistant to the Attorney General of the United States from 1905 to 1907, and then as Assistant Attorney General in 1907 under President Theodore Roosevelt. As an Assistant Attorney General, he was the lead prosecutor in the high profile trial, United States v. Ship, et al., 1907. This case involved a sheriff, Joseph Shipp, who was convicted of allowing a condemned black prisoner, who was the subject of a U.S. Supreme Court writ of habeas corpus, to be lynched. Sanford's conduct of the trial, particularly his exemplary closing argument, are said to be part of a great American trial. It is the only criminal trial conducted before the U.S. Supreme Court in which the court exercised original jurisdiction the court typically hears only criminal cases on appeal. It was widely followed in the newspapers. Ship and several others were later convicted. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> District Judge. On May 14, 1908, Roosevelt nominated Sanford to a seat on the United States District Court for the Middle District of Tennessee and the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Tennessee vacated by Charles D. Clark. Sanford was confirmed by the United States Senate on May 18, 1908 and received his commission the same day. <inaudible> <inaudible> Supreme Court Upon the advice of Sanford's friend, Chief Justice William Howard Taft, President Warren Harding nominated Sanford to the Supreme Court on January 24, 1923 to the seat vacated by Malin Pitney. 
Sanford was confirmed by the Senate and received his commission. On January 29, 1923, Sanford wrote 130 opinions during his seven years on the court. His most well known was the majority opinion in Gitlow v. New York. While upholding a state law banning anarchist literature, the opinion in Gitlow implied that some provisions of the Bill of Rights here the First Amendment's free speech provisions apply with equal force to the states via the Due Process Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment, commonly called incorporation, that had extraordinary consequences for the nationalization of the Bill of Rights during the era of the Warren Court, which later used similar reasoning to incorporate other amendments and expand civil liberties. Gitlow has been cited as precedent in cases such as Near v. Minnesota 1931, which incorporated the guarantee of freedom of the press, Griswold v. Connecticut 1965, which recognized the constitutional right to privacy, and more recently, McDonald v. Chicago 2010, which incorporated the right to bear arms. Sanford authored the majority opinion in Okanagan Indians v. United States, commonly called the pocket veto case which upheld the power of the president's pocket veto. Other noteworthy opinions by him are Taylor v. Voss, 271 U.S. 176 1926, and Fisk v. Kansas, 274 U.S. 380 1927. Sanford voted with the majority in Myers v. United States 1926, which upheld the president's authority to remove executive branch officials without the Senate's consent, and in ex-party Grossman 1925, which extended the president's pardoning power. Sanford concurred with Taft's dissent in Atkins v. Children's Hospital 1923. Chief Justice Taft is considered by some to have been Justice Sanford's mentor. They routinely sided together in decisions and were a part of the court's conservative inner club that regularly met at the Chief Justice's house for libations and conviviality on Sundays. <laughs> Death Justice Sanford unexpectedly died in 1930 of uremic poisoning following a dental extraction in Washington, D.C., just a few hours before Chief Justice William Howard Taft, who had retired five weeks earlier. As it was customary for members of the court to attend the funeral of deceased members, that posed a logistical nightmare because of the immediate travel from Knoxville for Sanford's funeral to Washington for Taft's funeral. As had been the case in their careers, Taft's death overshadowed Sanford's demise. Sanford is interred at Greenwood Cemetery in Knoxville. Legacy. In 1894, Sanford was chosen to deliver the centennial address at his alma mater, the University of Tennessee. The address, which discussed the institution's history, was published the following year as Blunt College and the University of Tennessee, an historical address. Sanford's papers are located at various institutions in Tennessee. Sanford was an active member of Civitan International. Sanford is one of six Tennesseans who have served on the Supreme Court. See also Publications Sanford, Edward Terry. The 18th of June 1895, Blunt College and the University of Tennessee, an historical address at Google Books. Notes Topic. Further reading Topic. External links Edward T. Sanford Papers, University of Tennessee Knoxville Libraries Edward Terry Sanford at the Biographical Directory of Federal Judges, a public domain publication of the Federal Judicial Center. Research Collections, Edward Terry Sanford Bibliography, Justice Edward Terry Sanford at Sixth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals. U.S. Justice Edward Sanford. Tennessee History Classroom Full History Stories. Tennessee Online History Magazine.
Archived from the original on April 18, 2012. Retrieved April 18, 2012.